بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم we have summation over positive integer n of zeta of 2n plus 1 minus 1 over 2n plus 1 times 2n plus 3 Consider x between minus 1 and 1 and the sum n from 1 to infinity, zeta of 2n plus 1 minus 1 over 2n plus 1. x to the 2n plus 1. Note that the sum of interest can be obtained from this sum. If we multiply by x, then integrate x from 0 to 1. Zeta of s is summation m from 1 to infinity, 1 over m to the power s. This is 1 plus 1 over 2 to the s plus 1 over 3 to the s and so on. Zeta of 2n plus 1 minus 1 is summation m from 2 to infinity, 1 over m to the power 2n plus 1 x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 can be written as integral t from 0 to x of t to the power 2n. Now we have an integral with respect to t and a double sum with indices n and m. Let's sum first over n. We have summation over positive integer n of t over m to the power 2n. t is less than x, which is less than 1. m is greater than or equal to 2. t over m is less than 1 in magnitude. This is a conversion to metric series that is equal to t over m squared over 1 minus t over m squared. Multiplying numerator and denominator by m squared, we get t squared over m squared minus t squared. Because of this plus 1 here, we also have 1 over m. Let's start the sum with respect to m from 1. We need then to subtract t squared over 1 minus t squared. We have integral t from 0 to x minus t squared over 1 minus t squared. Add and subtract 1. This is integral t from 0 to x of 1 minus 1 over 1 minus t squared. This is equal to x minus integral t from 0 to x of 1 over 1 minus t squared. For this part, we do partial fractions. This is equal to minus 1 over m plus 1 half between brackets 1 over m plus t plus 1 over m minus t. The bracket times 1 half is m over m squared minus t squared. When we subtract 1 over m, we get m times m squared minus t squared in the denominator. In the numerator, we have m squared minus m squared plus t squared, that's t squared. So we have this x, the integral with integrand 1 over 1 minus t squared, which is 1 half between brackets 1 over 1 minus t plus 1 over 1 plus t. We also have integral t from 0 to x, summation m from 1 to infinity of these three terms. Minus 1 over m can be written as minus 1 over 2m minus 1 over 2m. We take minus 1 half as a common factor. We then have 1 over m plus 1 over m minus 1 over m plus t minus 1 over m minus t, which is 1 over m minus 1 over m plus t plus 1 over m minus 1 over m minus t. Change the summation index m to m plus 1. Now the sum starts from 0. Every m here is replaced by m plus 1. Recall that the di gamma function, epsilon of z, the logarithmic derivative of the gamma function, has the series representation minus a small gamma, the Euler Mascheroni constant plus summation m from 0 to infinity, 1 over m plus 1 minus 1 over m plus z. Based on this, this summation is a small gamma plus di gamma of 1 plus t. That summation is a small gamma plus di gamma of 1 minus t. The integrand is 2 times small gamma plus di gamma of 1 plus t plus di gamma of 1 minus t. After doing partial fractions here and integrating, we obtain 1 half log 1 minus x minus 1 half log 1 plus x, which is minus 1 half log 1 plus x over 1 minus x. This is the inverse hyperbolic tangent of x. When we integrate this term, we get 2 small gamma times x times minus 1 half, that's minus gamma x. Together with this x, we get x times between brackets 1 minus small gamma. The antiderivative of di gamma of 1 plus t is log gamma of 1 plus t. The antiderivative of di gamma of 1 minus t is minus log gamma of 1 minus t. When t is 0, we have gamma of 1, which is 1, and log 1 is 0. When t is x, and after multiplying by minus 1 over 2, we get 1 half log gamma of 1 minus x minus 1 half log gamma of 1 plus x. We can write minus 1 half log gamma of 1 plus x over gamma of 1 minus x. To get the sum of interest, we multiply by x and then integrate x from 0 to 1. This is what we get after multiplying by x. Before integrating, I express gamma of 1 plus x and gamma of 1 minus x in terms of gamma of x. Gamma of 1 plus x is x times gamma of x. From the reflection rule, we know that gamma of x times gamma of 1 minus x is by the cosecant of by x. So 1 over gamma of 1 minus x is equal to gamma of x over pi times sine by x. Thus, the argument of the logarithm becomes x, the square of gamma of x sine by x over pi. To obtain the sum of interest, we integrate x from 0 to 1. From here, we get 1 minus a small gamma over 3. We need to evaluate these two integrals. Note that this integral requires the value of integral x from 0 to 1, x log of gamma x. To obtain this integral, we make use of the Fourier series of the log gamma function. We integrate these three terms after multiplying them by x. We also integrate this series term by term after multiplying by x. We have two straightforward integrals of quadratic functions. Let's focus on integral x from 0 to 1 of x log sine by x. Replace x by 1 minus x. 
we get integral x from 0 to 1, 1 minus x, log sine pi of 1 minus x. This is sine by x. If this integral is i, that one is i. i can be written as the arithmetic mean of these two integrals. That's 1 half times their sum. The sum of these two integrals is integral x from 0 to 1. x plus 1 minus x, that's 1. The integrand now is log sine by x. Note that the integrand is symmetric about pi over 2. 1 half times this integral is integral x from 0 to 1 half log sine by x. This is also integral x from 0 to 1 half log cosine by x. We obtain this integral from that one by replacing x by 1 half minus x. Noting that sine pi over 2 minus pi x is cosine by x. Consider integral x from 0 to 1 half log sine of 2 pi x. We evaluate this integral in two ways. Note that the integrand is symmetric about 1 over 4. This integral is 2 times integral x from 0 to 1 fourth log sine 2 by x. If we do the change of variables, y equal to 2x, we have integral log sine pi y. 2 dx is dy. When x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1 fourth, y is 1 half. This is all. We can do something else. Sine 2 by x is equal to 2 sine by x cosine by x. The logarithm of this product is log 2 plus log sine by x plus log cosine by x. When we integrate, we get 1 half log 2 plus the integral of sine by x, x from 0 to 1 half, that's i. If sine is replaced by cosine, we also get i. Now we have an equation, i is equal to 1 half log 2 plus 2i, so i is equal to minus log 2 over 2. When this term in log gamma of x is multiplied by x and integrated, we get log 2 over 4. Integral x from 0 to 1 of x sine 2 by kx is minus 1 over 2 by k, x cosine 2 by kx. We use the limits of integration. When x is 0, this is 0. When x is 1, we get minus 1 over 2 pi k. We also have integral x from 0 to 1, cosine 2 pi kx. The antiderivative is sine 2 pi kx, which is 0 when x is 0 or when x is 1. So this integral is minus 1 over 2 pi k. The integral x from 0 to 1, x log gamma of x, is these three terms, minus 1 over 2 pi squared, summation over positive integer k of log k over k squared. Recall that zeta of s is summation k from 1 to infinity, 1 over k to the s, Take s to have a real part strictly greater than 1. The first derivative of the zeta function is summation k from 1 to infinity minus log k over k to the power s. This means that this summation here is minus the first derivative of the zeta function at 2. To complete the evaluation of this integral, we also need integral x from 0 to 1 of x log x. This is 1 half integral x from 0 to 1 log x dx squared. Do integration by parts. We have x squared over 2 log x minus 1 half integral x from 0 to 1 x squared times the first derivative of log x, that's x. From here, we get minus 1 over 4. When x is 1, this is 0. When x tends to 0 from above, we obtain a limit of 0. Thus, this integral is minus 1 fourth. We already have the integral of x log sine by x. What about this integral here? We can use the Taylor series expansion of the inverse hyperbolic tangent function and integrate term by term. 1 half log 1 plus x over 1 minus x is summation over non-negative integer g of x to the power 2g plus 1 over 2g plus 1. When we multiply by x, we get x to the 2g plus 2. When we integrate, we get summation g from 0 to infinity, 1 over 2g plus 1 times 2g plus 3. Doing partial fractions, this is 1 half between brackets 1 over 2g plus 1 minus 1 over 2 between brackets g plus 1 plus 1. This is a telescopic sum equal to 1 half. The last thing to do here is to express the first derivative of the zeta function at 2 in terms of the glacier kentlin's constant. In a previous video, we have obtained that this derivative is theta of 2 between brackets small gamma minus 12 log a, that's the glacier kentlin's constant, plus log 2 pi. When we simplify what we have, log 2 disappears, log pi disappears, we end up with an expression in terms of a and small gamma. Specifically, summation n from 1 to infinity, zeta of 2n plus 1 minus 1 over 2n plus 1 times 2n plus 3 is minus 1 over 24 minus a small gamma over 3 plus log a.